Hello and welcome back to alchemist.camp where we learn elixir and phoenix by building things. Today we're going to start a new chat server project and we're going to use the even newer phoenix 1.4. I say even newer because it hasn't even been released yet. It's release candidate 2 and we're going to set it up right now. First of all you need elixir so if you don't have that go to alchemist.camp slash episodes Scroll all the way down to lesson one, click that, and it will get you set up. And then we're going to set up Phoenix 1.4. So first thing we're going to do, since we're installing something new, is update our local hex archives. So we'll do that with mix local.hex. Then we'll look at what's already installed. So mix archive will let us see what we have. This hex 0.18.1 is what we just installed with the uh, mix local.hex. And phoenix underscore new is the old installer for phoenix 1.3. You don't have to do this, but I strongly recommend uninstalling your old installer just so as to avoid some really weird, difficult to debug problem that may or may not come up. So I'm going to do that with mix archive dot uninstall phoenix underscore new confirm and now we don't have anything except for the hex itself and then we'll install a new version of phoenix so it's mix archive dot install hex phoenix underscore new and it's version 1.4.0 rc.2 And now we can create a new app. So it's the same syntax it always has been. Mix phoenix.new. And we'll call this chit chat since it's a chat server. This will take a moment, so I'll pause the video. All right, now that it's installed, we can change into the directory. Although, actually, I think I'm just going to change the directory for my Visual Studio code instead. Close that. Control K, Control O. Uh, elixir practice slash chit chat there we go and let's make sure that we've got our database set up i believe it's done automatically but we'll make sure mix ecto dot create and it has already been created so we can just run the app iex dash s mix phoenix dot server to do it in interactive mode And there we go. It is Phoenix 1.4. And let's look at the output here. It looks like we are running Cowboy 2.5.0, which means we can use HTTP 2. All right, now let's see what else we've got in our new app and what's new in Phoenix 1.4. So we'll start with the mix file. And I guess it uses, I've got a newer version of Elixir than this, but I guess that's the default. And we have Ecto 3.0. We have the JSON JSON encoder instead of the older poisoned encoder. And the difference uh, is pretty small, but JSON is faster. So yeah, they made that the default. And we're using Cowboy 2.0 as uh, we already saw above. Everything else looks pretty much the same. And if we look in our channels, we should see couple of small changes as well. So previously after line five there were some lines about transports. Those are gone and in our endpoint EX these two lines five and six a long uh, web socket and a long pole settings have been added to this initial socket here. So slightly different syntax and we'll dig into channels in more depth once we're building out the chat part of the app. The other really big change, of course, is Webpack. So inside our assets directory, we no longer have a branch file. We've got a Webpack config. And actually, let's look at the package JSON first. Looks like it puts everything related to JavaScript in dev dependencies. We've got Babel. Uh, we've got the Babel Webpack loader. We have CSS loader, um, some pretty basic stuff, minification and it's Webpack version 4.4. 4. 
we're going to need to change some of this because we want to use SCSS instead of just CSS. We have the same entry point as before. We still output everything to an app.js. And we've got a rule for JavaScript to run everything through Babel. And then we've got a fairly straightforward CSS block. This basically just runs everything through a CSS loader. And this lets you require CSS files from JavaScript files. And then there's this mini CSS extract plugin, which does a bunch of stuff related to source maps, I believe. And it also creates a separate CSS file for each JavaScript file that has CSS in it. So for SCSS, we need another block and it's going to have a test regex that matches any file name ending with SCSS and dollar sign for the end and then we'll use basically the same stuff we've already got up here so I'm just gonna copy that down except we're going to run one more loader through it now remember webpack loaders go uh, backwards basically you, the one that's specified last is the first one to run so we'll run a SAS loader which will convert SAS into CSS and then we'll run the CSS loader and then we'll run the mini CSS extract plugin and in fact we can just change this regex to make the S optional so this will match SCSS or CSS then we don't need this block and everything should work the same way but of course we do have to install those loaders to use this SAS loader we're gonna to have to install a SAS loader module and we're also going to have to install node SAS, which is the actual module that converts SCSS into CSS. So let's stop our server and we'll actually go into another terminal, change directory into assets. And npm install and all of these modules were in dev dependencies, so we'll pass it save dev so that it only saves these as dev dependencies, node sass and sass loader. While that's installing, there are a couple other things that we're going to have to change. This main app.css file, we're going to change to app.scss, save that then our app.js file is currently importing all our css from app.css i'm going to change that to scss and then just so that we know everything is working let's add some scss that would not be valid css we'll make a variable so bg color is going to be uh, i guess one two three four five six nice slate color there and then we'll just set the body to that color so the body should be everything that's white now body background color is dollar bg color save that and then restart our server And there we go. So we've updated Phoenix to version 1.4. It's using Cowboy 2, which means we can use HTTP 2. We've got Ecto 3. We're now using the JSON, JSON decoder. And we've set up Webpack to use Babel and SAS for our CSS. And notice we've also got instant reloads. So and maximize this window so we can see it happen. Take out this line, save it, and instant updates as we code. With this setup out of the way, next video we'll make schemas for our chat rooms and for our users, and we'll also make some basic CRUD actions so that we can work with those users and chat rooms through a web interface. See you next time.